Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Howdy, howdy. Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Show. So, um, oh my gosh, what a crazy morning this has been. Uh, so I have to tell y'all, we have we have great guests on today, um, starting about 1.30. And so I want you guys to tune in because Gary Kaufman, we're going to call him. He is was supposed to be in the studio with us, but he is driving up from Austin. This little bit of rain, it just am- blows my mind what a little bit of rain can do. I'm sorry, I'm adjusting my mic and stuff as we're sitting here on the air. Can y'all hear me? Can you hear me? Will, can you hear me in there? Yes, I can. Nod that head. Okay. I got to get this thing. We got to get some kind of arm. I feel like I have to crouch down. This is not good for posture. I'll send right. somebody in there to help you out. Oh, there you go. I'll just lay down. Here, there we go. I'll lay down talking to the mic. So it's hard to read that way. Anyways, we, uh, we're glad you guys tuned in to us today. We're going to talk a little bit about mental health a little bit later. Um, what I'm thinking we'll do, uh, since Gary's not here, is we'll let him join in at 1.30. And in the meantime, we've got a whole bunch of Zika and West Nile virus news to talk about. And so uh, so I want to get you guys all caught up uh, with what's going on. Um, so first of all, in Texas, so if you're uh, listening to me and you're living up here where I am, just so you know, so far in Texas, we have had nine human cases, uh, actually nine human cases of the neuroinvasive West Nile virus. Uh, we've had one West Nile virus death due to the neuroinvasive um, version of West Nile virus. We've only had 18 total cases um, throughout the state, so that's not too bad. But we are finding lots and lots of mosquitoes with the West that are carrying the West Nile virus. So there's um, 385 just in North Texas, um, 385 West Nile virus pos- uh, positive pools. So that means they found mosquitoes with West Nile virus in it. You know, m- uh, most of the people in this industry have been saying all along that the West Nile virus is really going to be a bigger concern uh, for us than Zika virus. Um, Zika is a lot easier to contain, and uh, West Nile virus um, can be more deadly. But most of y'all know, uh, we have had one uh, death of an infant in Houston from Zika virus. But this was an imported case. This was not somebody that got Zika down in Houston. They actually were traveling overseas. Um, the baby actually was already infected with Zika when it got to Houston, and um, and then it died there. So um, thoughts and prayers go out to them and to the West Nile virus victims. I know what it's like. I've been there, and it's not fun. I didn't have the neuroinvasive kind, but I did have the kind that, uh, you know, it talks about uh, the uh, symptoms, uh, headache, fever, muscle and joint aches, nausea, fatigue. Um, and that can get really, really, really painful and tough to, to function uh, with that going on. And that happened for about uh, two months. Uh, so the neuroinvasive kind is a life-threatening illness, and it uh, can cause neck stiffness, stupor, disorientation even a coma, tremors, convulsions, muscle weakness, paralysis. Wow, that sounds like what I went through here in uh, March. <laughs> so uh, anyways, uh, but anyway, so uh, West Nile virus is it's in North Texas. So let's do this. Everybody just, you know, let's be careful. Uh, wear a repellent when you're going outside. You know, the very first case, I say this over and over. I know y'all are tired of hearing it, but uh you know, the problem is it only takes one. Uh, the first case we had of West Nile virus death in North Texas was a guy walked out to his mailbox. Got bit. That's the only thing he ever did. He was stayed indoors. He's an old guy. And he walked out to his mailbox to get his mail, got bit by one mosquito, and he died from West Nile virus. So, um, so wear repellent even if you're going to the mailbox. It's a good idea. Hey, if you're going to wear repellent, why not wear repellent that smells nice, you know? If you're going to – I know, Will, you stink pretty bad, so if you wear – where uh, West, uh, my I stuff. smell all the time. I mean, I can't help it. It's because I'm using off instead of, uh, you know, Mosquito Steve. That's right. That's right. So um, anyways, okay, so uh, so that's our latest report. We do have 106 cases of Zika in Texas uh, throughout all of Texas. Now, 
None of those are localized versions. So every one of those came from somebody traveling overseas um, to the Caribbean or uh, uh, Puerto Rico and then bringing it in. So it's not like the case in Florida, right? Nothing like the case in Florida. So here's the thing. This is really important. There's actually one quarter of all of the Zika cases in America are in Florida. So this is, I mean, I've been talking to radio shows all over the country this week and last week. And, uh, you know, everybody's worried about it coming up to, I don't know, you know, Wisconsin. Well, you don't really have to worry about it in Wisconsin about Zika that much. I mean, it is possible that somebody could travel overseas, carry it up there, a mosquito could bite them and carry it. First of all, they don't have the 80s Aegypti and 80s Albopictus normally that far north. So it's not likely that it's going to turn into an outbreak like it did in Florida. Um, and so uh, the, the thing is with West Nile virus, because the reason that it travels, the reason that West Nile virus can be a more widespread outbreak is because birds get infected with it and they fly around and they carry the disease with them. Uh, with Zika, you're talking about it, you know, a mosquito uh, people don't, I guess that, that the reason it's traveling overseas is because people are traveling. And so, um, uh, so it could travel that way, but, but the birds are the reason that it's carried around the country and West Nile, but it's also because it's in the Culex mosquito and the Culex mosquito is numerous everywhere, including up North. And so, um, uh, so that's why, so if you're up North, you need to worry about West Nile virus, but probably not so much about Zika unless, you know, you've got a friend that went over to Puerto Rico and came back and is not feeling well, I would leave the house is immediately. And, uh, uh, but anyways, uh, at least get tested. If you think that you've got some, uh, some version of that, if you come back and you're not feeling well, then, um, then I think you should go get tested. That's the responsible thing to do. So, um, the interesting, so here in with the Zika in Florida, again, this is mostly contained in a one square mile area. However, they actually now, there are some cases outside of that one square mile area. So it is spreading a little bit, but it's still a lot easier to contain. And the reason is because those mosquitoes, a Culex mosquito also will, will fly a mile. A 80s mosquito is only going to fly, you know, about two football, football fields, about it. And so, um, so you know, you might get one 600 feet or so. Other than that, they don't travel a lot. So, um, so we're still concentrated. They're still concentrating their efforts on controlling the mosquitoes in the one square mile area of, of Wynwood over in Miami, Florida. Um, but there are actually there's two more so here's here's what's great here's the reason I'm, I'm pausing is because um they they actually put a report a more detailed report out and they're explaining how this whole thing started in florida so you know they're giving us some details so it's kind of cool to find out what the details are uh, on august 7th they uh, sent out the uh, the uh, the story and so i've been wondering what the story was and now we know what the story is so uh, so here, I'm going to share a little bit of this with you because I think this is important in helping you to understand. So as I said, one quarter of the cases of the Zika virus in the U.S. Um, are in Florida. So right now there's 1,962. This is as of August um, 7th. They had 1,962 cases of Zika um, in the U.S., they had 413 travel-related cases of Zika in Florida, in addition to 28 infections not believed to be related to travel. So, um, so that is so that they've got 28 cases. That's not that many, really, uh, but that's all in one square mile area. And then they said that there has been a couple of people outside of that area, but they said it's not beyond anything they can control. So the Florida health officials don't feel like it's out of control yet. So that's good. That's we don't want to we don't if they start panicking, then we'll all panic. How about that? So um, but here's the interesting thing. You know, I've told you all before, you know, these we're learning about this disease as it as it goes. And and uh, in this article that they put out, they use the word confounded and confounding often. So the, um, the Florida health officials are confounded about uh, which means they don't know what's going on. That's why I say we really don't know. We are learning on the job here on this Zika thing. So. Um, they're confounding facts um, laced with potential danger is what they say. 
So this first case um, in that Wynwood area was a woman in her early 20s who is pregnant. And uh, so some of that uh, you guys know. But um, again, this is confounding to the officials as to how she got it because apparently she wasn't in the area, um, you know, so uh, or wasn't around anybody that had the virus. So they're they're not sure how she got it. So they can't really trace down where exactly it comes from. Uh, often you can do that with West Nile virus. They can do an autopsy and figure all that out and uh, uh, get to the, the beginning of the disease. So uh, then they've got this patient that um, – uh, had had a house guest from Brazil where the of course Brazil you know it's explosive down there uh, it's going crazy they had 166 thousand infections of Zika virus in Brazil and hundreds of defects in newborns and so uh, we're not going to hit anything like that I know that Puerto Rico's having a lot of troubles with it we don't need to worry about that so much here because uh, because we got a lot more resources, honestly, and we're on top of it a little bit more than they are down there. So, um, so I think don't don't panic. Don't anybody panic about this. If you're pregnant, just be careful. Don't travel over there, and if you're going outside, wear repellent. It's really that simple. So, okay, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about bees. Uh, if you feel like calling in, 817-787-1190 or 214-787-1190. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show. Howdy, howdy. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show, folks. Um, okay, so before I forget, I do this every week. I always forget, so I'm going to tell you right off the bat. If you have any questions, email steve at mosquitosteve.com. Steve at mosquitosteve.com. If you can't spell mosquito, it's M-O-S-Q-U-I-T-O. And so uh, Steve at MosquitoSteve.com, and I can answer you directly. And uh, and if you're okay with that, I'll um, talk about your question on the air. Also, uh, if you have any, uh, if you just want some more information, you want to see some of the videos that I put together, uh, some of them with mosquitoes on me and, you know, showing you the actual tests that I do. Uh, we've got a lot, a lot of uh, um links to um, other video and media I've done. So uh, my website's www.mosquitosteve.com, www.mosquitosteve.com. And uh, by the way, if you can listen to this show anywhere in the world on iHeartRadio, uh, Talk Radio 1190. So if you're not in the Dallas-Fort Worth area listening on 1190 AM, you can always listen to it on iHeartMedia and, um, or streaming. And so there's no excuse whatsoever. So, all right, a couple of uh, news items I want to talk about real quick, and then I have a, a B comment I need to make. So, so um, there's again, remember I just was talking about how we're learning as we go on the Zika. Well, they just found um, that Zika can remain in sperm for six months. So it was said before that a week or two and then it should pass and everything's going to be okay. Well, now we're finding out that that may not be the case, that Zika can remain in sperm for six months. So if you've been traveling to those areas that have Zika virus, just now you got to wait for six months before you do anything. That's just ridiculous. Okay. One other news point here real quick. West Nile virus, We've had the first death, August 11th was first death in Denver from West Nile virus. And so um, West Nile virus, is, it's moving around, folks. And so that's the one you got to watch out for, and it's more deadly. I understand we have a call. We do. His name is Dave. Okay. Hey, Dave. Yes, sir. This is Mosquito Steve. Dave, how you doing? Hey, great. Thanks for uh, taking my call. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for calling. <laughs> You know, you had the uh, the gentleman who uh, elderly man who went to the mailbox to get uh, his mail and got stuck. I it, I hate putting on deep. I hate to have to put it on and take a shower. I hate putting it on my younger kids. Does your oil base the product you have that's more natural? Do you have to wash that off too? 
Well, you don't have to wash it off because it's essential oils. It's not like DEET because of the chemicals in it. It Yeah, I don't want to run around with that soaking into my skin all day long because, you know, anything you put on your skin has a chance of soaking in, into your, your bloodstream. So, yeah, I but mine is, is uh, mostly essential oils with uh, some, some carriers like IPA, and that, uh, that actually evaporates pretty quick. And so, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's actually – it, it's actually it's on the EPA's list of products that are so harmless that they don't require registration, and so, so um, it, and it smells so, good too. It smells a lot better. So be just like if I put lotion on and went to the, get my mail, it, it wouldn't be a big deal. It would not be a big deal. Now I would tell you if you get any lotions, you know most of, there are some lotion repellents out there, and in all of my testing, in fact, I just did another test recently on it. Uh, wipes and lotions, uh, for some reason, and I think it's because of the evaporative powers are not working as well, but um, in in wipes and lotions, your efficacy is half as what it is with a spray-on repellent. So, uh, and if you're needing a spray-on repellent, Dave, I'll tell you what, I've got a sale starting uh, tomorrow evening going through the week. It's a back-to-school sale, and it's buy one, get one free on spray-on repellents. So, Fantastic. How yeah. do I get that? So, mosquitosteve.com and just go to the online store. Thanks, Steve. All right, really thanks, Dave. That. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Okay, so, you know, we had a great guest last week, and we talked about bees, and uh, uh, he was awesome. I, I can't say enough about this, how important it is that we take into consideration what we're doing with the, to the environment when we spray these chemicals out there. And I know that there's a lot of companies that are saying that the pyrethrins and things like that are not bad. Folks, there is evidence that shows that these chemicals kill bees. But I have to tell you, so I ran into this guy, and he had this friendly bee on his truck, and it made it look like what he was spraying was safe and and harmless. And so I'm going to read you some of the stuff that's on his website. And... um, because it's, it's interesting because they, they make it seem like you can't protect your kids and and um, uh, and protect bees as well. And that's not the case. So, so, so-and-so, I'm not going to tell you the name, um, all things that buzz aren't bad. In spite of painful sting, the honeybee is responsible for both honey production and pollination. Well, there you go. So, um, gosh, I didn't know that. Did y'all know that bees were responsible for uh, – I think everybody knows that. Anyways – and those are two very important roles. That's why the honeybee happens to be one of our favorite beneficial insects. Just ahead of the honeybee, though, are our children, their health, and their safety. And this is where it starts. See, they're doing the old um, uh, bait and switch on you. So, hey, you know, yes, we care about bees, but gosh, we care about your kids more. So, so what they're doing is they're basically they're setting you up for the excuse they're fixing to give you. There are people out there perpetuating an argument that pesticides are responsible for the widespread decline in bee populations worldwide, a phenomenon known as colony collapse disorder. As a result, many of these same people are implying and in some case flat out accusing pest control companies like us of killing off the honeybees. So let me tell you something, folks, just in case you run into something like this or somebody using a, in quotation marks, botanical insecticide. Let's be real clear on this. There is a lot of evidence that shows that these pesticides are partly responsible for us um, uh, for the drop in not just bees, but all of our pollinators. So without our pollinators, that's pollinators all together, the bees and the butterflies, all, three quarters of our food supply comes from that. And you know that Right here, we don't worry about it. You go to the grocery store, it looks like, I mean, we're throwing out good food at the grocery store. But, you know, there's parts of the world where food is, is uh, a lot more critical. And so, um, so in those places, it's very important that they're able to grow food and they need the pollinators. So just in case, I'm just letting you all know in case somebody tells you otherwise. They're actually, in fact, I read from a story last week where it was very specific that neonicotinoids are killing off the bees. And so, um, and what it, and the reason is, is what it does is it, it affects the, the sperm count of the bee. It drops by 40%. Boy, we've got a lot of sperm news today, don't we? Sorry about that. So the sperm count of the bee drops by 40% due to the neonicotinoids. So that that is some of y'all that have tried to get pregnant, you know what that could mean. I mean, it's tough and so uh, sometimes. And so um, 
So you don't that, – that's not the only thing, though. The other part of it is uh, – and they've had studies, um, and I just read one out of uh, the Washington State where they did a, a study on the um, on permethrin and pyrethrins in the bees. And what they found with those is the bees were actually – they were so um, – their learning – was so slowed down they they couldn't learn and so they weren't able to function as a you know a worker bee like they're supposed to so um so don't let anybody tell you that pesticides aren't hurting i, I mean come on guys this is really this is the same guy i could say it over and over again these are the same guys that used to tell us it's safe to smoke cigarettes and it really is it's i guarantee you, a public relations company wrote that that little bit that I just read to you, a public relations firm did. And it's probably, they, you know, they probably would have been in the 70s, they would have been telling us, it's safe to smoke cigarettes. It's okay. Well, they want that money. That's right. It is. It's all about the just follow the dollar. That's what it takes. You just follow the dollar. So um, so anyways, I, I just, um, there's a lot of misinformation out there, folks. Um, I wish you'd look at my website and and look at the studies I do. I've actually got... Um, yeah, I had a guy this week. I was we were um, having a little bit of an argument because he's telling me, "Oh, we need to go get some lab testing done." I I want to get some lab testing done, and I see the value in lab testing. But I can tell you right now, it does not mimic the real world. There's a reason why I stand outside and count mosquitoes. And I've been doing that a whole lot in the last two weeks, and so I'm testing some new products and stuff. And in and, and it's not fun. I'm not doing this because it's fun, because it's not. Standing outside when it's 102 and it's very humid and I'm sweating and gross and, and then laying, letting mosquitoes land on me. This is not a fun um, project for me, but it's very, very important. That's how you tell if products work. You actually test them in the field. And I've got people telling me that, that it's you can tell better um, by a lab test than you can by... <laughs> Then you can by actually the real world being in that environment where the mosquitoes are and testing that way. Now, let me ask you, what sounds more logical? What would you trust more? Somebody that's tested in a laboratory where it's a clean environment, the mosquitoes are different, and they're in a plastic cage, or testing in the real world where you are and I am? So I'll let you tell me. Do we have a call? Or are we calling somebody else? We called somebody else. We oh, have our we guest, did. our next guest oh, on, the, okay. on the line. Oh, he's already on the line? Okay. All right. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm doing fine, Gary. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Are you uh, uh, Are you counting mosquitoes right now? Uh, no, no, but I was this morning, and I was last night, and I was the night before last, and so I've been doing that a lot lately. And, you know, it's funny because that's a really good segue into uh, talking about mental health because <laughs> I have to tell you the days that I have to count mosquitoes at the end of the day, I get really, really depressed. And so uh, so I, I'm, uh, uh, I don't like counting mosquitoes, but it's something that has to be done. So, so we're done with mosquito talk, evidently, because we got Gary on the line. See, folks, this is Gary Kaufman. Um, formerly of Memorial Hermann when he was here a month ago, and now he's not with Memorial Hermann. Tell us about the place you're at now. Well, right now, Steve, I'm at uh, a place in Dallas called Chapter House Recovery. And no, no, no. I mean, where are you on the road now? Where are you? Where are you? Are you? Are you at Bucky's yet? You want me to give you the exit? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, let me give you the exit. No, I'm, I'm just. To... I'm, Gary, Gary's driving up from Austin, so uh, he got stuck down there because of the rain. A little bit of rain, folks, and our, you know, all of a sudden our airports go wacky on us. So, so Gary's driving up from Austin. So we're fixing to go to a break, and um, but when we come back, we got more from Gary, and he can tell us about his drive on the way back. And he's actually got a guest with him in the car. And so, um, uh, can Maggie hear me? Yeah, she's yeah. We can hear you. Hi, Steve. Hi, Maggie. Hi. So, uh, so when we come back, we've got our guests, our two guests, Maggie Howard and Gary Kaufman, and we'll talk about mental health and other organics and taking care of ourselves and health in general. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And don't forget, if you got any questions, um, send them steve at mosquitosteve.com. We'll talk to you soon. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more of the Mosquito Steve Radio Show. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Stevie, play guitar. Hey there, this is Mosquito Steve. Welcome back to the show. 
Um, uh, we've got somebody on the line that um, I know everybody enjoys talking to. I know Gary's got a lot of friends. See, I don't have a lot of friends because I hang out with mosquitoes. Gary has tons of friends. He's one of the most popular guys I know, and he loves it. He loves being popular. He's um, He would have won Mr. Um, most likely to succeed in high school, I'm sure. Uh, probably would have been homecoming king, and uh, so he's he's Mr. Friendly, Gary Kaufman from the Chapter House. Hi, Gary. Oh, hey, hey, let me. I was just getting up. Um, <laughs> let me, I, was, I was no, I I was dozing off when you were talking, and I didn't I didn't realize you, we were on the air. But go, yeah, yeah, I'm here. So is Maggie driving or are you driving? I'm driving. Maggie's next to me. We're a team. We're talking about business. We're having fun. We're talking about you. I mean, it's a good day. It's, Okay. A little rainy out, but uh, we're good. Well, good. Well, so you are going to stop at Bucky's and get some of the homemade potato chips, right? We don't do that. We're 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 healthy eaters. You know, we're into wellness. Oh. Uh, we're trying to enhance our lives physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, the whole bit. The package. Well, but if you were thinking of others, you would bring some to me. How about that? Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Damn. Okay. I'm, I'm kidding. I've actually been, I, you know, a little shout out to My Fit Foods. I am on the 21 day challenge with My Fit Foods, and um, I've lost like eight pounds. And, um, but Good what's, for you. but what's important is, is I'm learning to eat smaller portions. I'm learning to eat different, differently than what I usually do. And I haven't had sweets and sugar in the last two weeks, which is, that's a miracle for me. It really That's is. That's good for you. I love nice. that stuff. I love it. So, Maggie, what's the name of this place you're working at now? Tell me about what you do. Hi, Steve. Um, I'm with Foundations Recovery Network. Um, we're based in Brentwood, Tennessee, and I'm the business development representative for Texas. Um, we, pro- we provide dual diagnosis treatment. We're the leader, uh, uh, the gold standard in mental health, and uh, we have five inpatient facilities and nine intensive outpatient facilities. Well, wait, I thought Chapter House was the gold standard for... Well, that's where it's a different model. We do sober living, and they're in the... In the I know you're being funny, but we're, but we're there inpatient and IOP, and they do residential treatment, and we have uh, sober living in Dallas. So we're not... This isn't a conflict for us at all. We're not in competition in that sense, but, you know, we support each other in every way, and we... You know, we just came back from the um, uh, TAP conference, the Texas Association of Addiction Professionals in San Antonio, and we got to, you know, get in the car and spend four hours together, and she may want to get out of the car in the next 30 minutes uh, because <laughs> we're, only, we're only 20 minutes into this deal, so she might think, well, she'll Uber from Waco or something. I don't know. Well, but. here's I know Maggie well t- enough to know <clears throat> if you put on some country music, uh, everything will be okay. So uh, just country put on country music. music. Everything yes, will be okay. that will that will uh, soothe her. So, but let me, so you're driving. For, I thought you were in Austin. You're, you've been in San Antonio though. Yeah. So, um, and and I I bet the conference was fun. So this is a t- what is tap? Tell I know it's. Association of Addicted Professionals, but was this a statewide conference or what? Yeah, yeah, it's a statewide conference in San Antonio, and they they moved the locations. Uh, you know, we there's some people from all. There's quite a few, you know, exhibitors from other parts of the country that come in and um, and market their their programs and and what they do. So it's treatment professionals, interventionists, uh, therapists, uh, people that have. Uh, uh, behavioral health hospitals and uh, chemical dependency uh, treatment centers, and um, so it's good. It's, it's probably Texas. It's one of Texas. I would say it's probably our biggest conference in the business, and um, there's a lot of good things being done there. So Maggie had a uh, some time, and I couldn't get on a flight because of all the cancellations and stuff. So we rented a car and. Here we are driving, and I'm so sorry I couldn't be there in person and hold you and bring you your coffee and do all that stuff. But I think this is the next best thing, isn't it? Um, I don't know about that yet. We'll find out when by the time the show's over, though, because you know, I'm the <laughs> thing is, it's different when you're here. I mean, I, looking at you, you and I play off each other pretty well, and we can we can make up some pretty wild stuff. But being well, on the I phone with you is different. Can I see, yes. It, Speaking of country music, I want you to just imagine that, that imagine that I am there, 
and, and pretend that this is a version of the green, green grass of home. <laughs> and that song was about a guy in prison that, that pretended or he, he dreamt that he was going home to see his family. And he got off the train and there was that girl and his mom and dad and they were walking over to that old oak tree. But he realized it was just a dream. So you, you just got to kind of visualize that, that I'm there. Why, so why, was, why was he in prison? I have no idea. We, the song doesn't talk about that. Well, was there another the song that told about that? Because that would be, I don't think I'd listen to the song if I'd known that. It just seems a little ridiculous. That, I mean, what if he was a pedophile? Would you be talking about the song? I mean, it's like, come on, that's, I don't know. That's um, so, so, Gary, why are you, what got you so interested in this recovery thing in the first place? I mean, what, what is your background that makes you a, a, a recovery expert anyways? A and, and, and who got you into it too? <laughs> this is good stuff. Oh, this is a this is a, this is a beautiful segue, Steve. I love it. it. This so I've been what I would call a recovery advocate, never an expert, but a recovery advocate uh, since 1984 when I made a big change in my life and um, God granted me uh, some abstinence from drugs and alcohol, and I got to be free, but. The business itself, about a year, I guess two years ago, you made a suggestion that I come to a TAP meeting in Dallas, and uh, and I did that, and I met some people, and I will say with all sincerity that I do want to thank you, and without you, I wouldn't be in the business. That's the truth. I have to get that at least once a week. That's kind of the deal there. I just need to just need to remind. But a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know how wonderful I am, Gary. So you have to tell them. Oh well, no. I, I, what else can I? I could go on and on about you introduced me to Matt Theory, and that led to Oriel Herman, and the next thing you know, I'm at. But I love the business, you know. And and I, all joking aside, I do appreciate you, and I love what I do, and. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of suffering going on. There's a lot of people out there that don't have any idea where to go for help. Right. And so, you know, people like Maggie and, and you and myself and others are uh, can be a great resource for people that just don't know what to do. So so what did you uh, – d- uh, did you take a bunch – steal a bunch of silverware or something from Memorial Hermann? What, what's the deal? What what happened there? Why why'd you make the move? Uh, I have a side business. <laughs> And um, it, it's just a better fit for me to be up north in Texas and be kind of local. Uh, I have another business on the side that's not related to recovery. And uh, Chapter House is will allow me the, uh, a little freedom and flexibility. Um, I think, you know, I will reiterate that Memorial Herman does nothing but top-notch work for um, their, their clients. And I saw, I was able to see Matt and Jane Barnes and, and Nicole and Leslie and everybody down there from Memorial Hermit for this conference and was able to see them. And uh, so we all working together still, I mean, on different levels. I sent them a referral a couple of weeks ago, and I'll continue to send them people there. Like I said, they do excellent work at Memorial Hermit. But, you know, chapter houses, we're, we're, you know, guys that are getting out of treatment that really need some extended care. They need a place to stay uh, and, and live. We're three months minimum. We go we like to see people, you know, see these guys between 18 and 35 stay for, you know, six months. And it's highly structured. It's high accountability. Uh, we have people come in and do the steps and read the book and, and, and go really dive into the what the program is about. Um, and what I mean by that is a 12-step program. Uh, well, it, so it, I know you more ca- better for me. It was, and so, but you came from a huge, I mean, Memorial Harmon's a, what, a $4 billion company. And now you're with uh, this. Uh, I mean, how? Uh, I don't even think Chapter House has been around that long, has it? You know, just a few uh, years Chapter, old. Yeah, yeah, it's a couple years old. Chapter House, uh, Michael and Heidi Smith have, are great people. They're friends of mine, and and they've done. They've been in the business a lot longer than uh, than Chapter House has uh, has been around. And they were, uh, uh, you know pretty highly regarded in, in, in what we do and they were at the burning tree and uh they made a big difference there the, heidi was the clinical director and um uh michael was uh, handled a lot of the business and marketing and uh business development there and so you know they they've been in the business they know what's going on and they're respected and and they've got a a lot of contacts all over the country so um 
it's a nice move for me in, in my life right now, but it certainly wasn't anything that uh, was related to uh, you know, the lack of quality of care or anything like that. I know, and and, uh, I, and you and Gary doesn't have any enemies, so I I know that you, it wasn't really. I was just kidding about. It. I'm sure that y'all parted. Um, I know that you're still friends with Matt, and I know you still work with Memorial Herman. That's not the way we do things. What's great about long term recovery is you learn to, you know, that you don't have to you don't have to hate somebody to walk away from them. So um, we're going to be going to a break here in a minute, but before we do, I want to first uh, Gary tell. Where, how do people get a hold of you? How do they find out more information about Chapter House? Yeah, I mean, so if they, if they call me, they can call me directly. I'm, a lot of people call, they want to call me directly on my cell phone. They can do that, and they, I don't want you to post it or anything online because, you know, there might be one of my ex-girlfriends or something that calls. But uh. let me give you the admissions number, 888-448-9696. That's our admissions number for Chapter House. Find out more information. Once again, Chapter House, 888-448-9696. And we're in Dallas. So That is so weird. You know, one of our sponsors actually is 6969, and y'all are 9696. So I know nobody really cares. But... And, uh, well, those other numbers can be a trigger. I know, I know. Yeah, okay, that was. A, I think I like nine six nine six better than the other one. So, uh, hey, can I just give you real quick? Uh, how long we have? We got about a minute. Go for okay, it. Okay, yeah, Maggie's number at Foundations Recovery Network. I want to give you her. Yes. It's, uh, her, her number is eight one seven two three nine nine three zero eight, and she's with Foundations Recovery Network, and that number will get you over there. But. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Well, well Maggie's I, Maggie's cuter than Gary. That is for darn sure. She. Oh I, my God. That um, is absolutely, without a doubt. I, I wanted to bring up something, if you don't mind. If you know, what happens if a mosquito? How do you know if a mosquito it needs treatment? I mean, what are the signs <laughs> of a mosquito that, that's suffering from this disease? If it's breathing, if it's alive, if it's flying, they're all suffering. They're. Uh, God, I've I've had so many of them lately on me. It's it's just been miserable. So, um, you know, this is I, I, I tell I you, I really do. I need to start. You know, when I, on the days that I'm going to go testing, I need to start calling you or somebody so I can uh, get my spirits lifted. It is depressing. So, hey, we got a break coming up. We're going to come right back with Gary Kaufman and Maggie Howard driving up from San Antonio, and uh, we're going to hear. I want to hear about the sights you're seeing. So, uh, we'll be right back after this break. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Thank you. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show. Thanks to Earth, Wind, and Fire for stepping in here and playing some music for us today. And uh, <laughs> so, um, all right, Gary, Gary, and Maggie, y'all still there? We yeah. are. Okay. So, um, I want to first. I want to ask Gary, but I want to ask Maggie the same question. So, Gary, what age? group do you does chapter house deal with um or do y'all do y'all take adolescents or is it just adults well 18 to 35 okay. uh, we don't take adolescents we'll take some some 17 year olds but it's, it's typically 18 to 35 is the, is the age really so if i'm 45 and i'm having problems you what where where'd you send me we'll probably send you to some third world country um <laughs> get you on an airplane going over where you'll it's a, if you're talking about you personally or just any 45-year-old? No, any 45-year-old. All right, that's different. we got a lot of different programs for that. Um, but uh, we, don't, we don't handle that. We can, we'll send them out depending on, you know, what their situation is, what their issues are, you know, but um, we're 18 to 35. Okay. So, Maggie, what about you guys? Do you kick guys out when they turn 36 or do you take care of everybody? We take care of uh, everybody. We do not work with adolescents, so 18 and up. Okay, okay. So uh, so that's real important because there's, there's a lot fewer. Now, I know Memorial Herman had an adolescent program, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah there's an uh, adolescent program at Memorial Herman, 17, or 13 to 17, and then our young adults, or when I was there, they were 18 to 24, uh, was the young adults program, which is really great. And then, uh, you know, uh, 24 and up was, was adult. So, uh, so why is it important that that somebody, uh, I mean, that they separate the adolescents from 
adults in recovery? Treatment wise. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, it's uh, it's a legal thing. Um, the adults have to be separated from the adolescents. Uh, there's no option there. And then there's specific issues that are unique to the adolescent client that you know the adolescent programs uh, deal with. Uh, same thing with adults. There are adult programs are going to focus on the unique uh, needs of the adult patient. Okay, that's cool. See there, Gary, Gary, just hand the phone over to Maggie then. Let's just talk to Maggie. We have it on speaker. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, so, we, well, we work so, together. Yeah, I know, I know, and that's what's great. So it really it's, it is very interesting. It's a very tight-knit community. I've been involved with it a little bit before in the prevention side, and, and I realize that, uh, I mean, every, you guys, you're always helping each other out. You know, it's not like you're out stealing each other's clients. You're always helping each other out. So I think that's really cool. So um, so I was going to ask, though, so, <clears throat> um, I forgot my question. Oh, my God, I had this great question that I worked on so, all night. you're talking about. No, I no, I was going to talk about yourself. prevention. Go ahead. That's what it was, prevention. So I want to know. Because, you know, I'm always talking about preventing mosquitoes uh, from from biting you or landing on you. And so how do you prevent? Is there a way that um, you can prevent becoming addicted to alcohol or drugs? Or can parents help prevent the kids from getting addicted? Just say no. <laughs> okay, Nancy. <laughs> um, you know, we're, I think... And I'm sure you've mentioned Becky before, Becky Vance, with uh, the CEO of Drug Prevention Resources, which you're still on the board, and I think I'm on the board somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> i got to say that lightly. Uh, <laughs> Becky said I was on the board. I think I'm on the advisory board. We think we have a meeting probably coming up, don't we? We do. We do, I think. Yeah. A week after this one, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, those kinds of, I think, drug prevention resources and these kind of groups that are they're, they're truly in the prevention business or are, are great resources. You know, it's tough. I mean, there's a lot of education out there. There's a lot of uh, programs that kids can get involved with that will teach them about how to stay away from drugs and, and, and look and to be aware of what to look for that could, uh, you know, the circle of friends and the things they're doing that's outside of their, their normal life that could be uh, detrimental to this issue. So okay. I think education and, and um, having more awareness and having these groups come in um, like drug prevention resources. So on that. Yeah, say about prevention, Maggie, anything? I agree with you, Gary, that drug prevention resources is an excellent uh, source of education for us in the industry. Quit brown nosing. Quit brown nosing, Maggie. I hear you over there. So, <laughs> so hey, so, okay, so let me ask you this then. So in that same line of thinking, how do you prevent somebody that comes into recovery? Because I know a lot of people, including myself, it took I was in and out for four years. How do you get somebody to come in and stay in and get this deal instead of how do you prevent them from going back out? Huh. I, yeah, I mean. I think that equipping them, first of all, starting off with a good, you know, treatment facility where they can be armed with the tools necessary to succeed in recovery. Um, I think connecting them with a wonderful supportive network once they discharge from treatment uh, and the resources that each client may need, such as, you know, continuing care, a psychiatrist, um, and, uh, you know, therapists, one-on-one -on -one therapists, those are all things as well as not to discount getting involved in a 12-step or supportive recovery community uh, to increase the likelihood of outcomes. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this, Steve. The biggest issue in the treatment, the treatment world that we have is when the people leave treatment, they have a 30-day program, 60-day program, where they, they're an IOP, they're done with their intensive outpatient program, their eight-week program, they're done with it, that transition right there into back into their normal life is the, is the most vulnerable period. What are they doing? They extended care. Are they going to sober living? Are they have an aftercare program? Do they have a sponsor in a 12-step program? What are they doing in that period of time? That's the time where they're most vulnerable. People, staying in, recovery is easy if you're in rehab. You go in there, you meet a bunch of people, you do the program, and you're hopefully doing some very good things, but it's about when you get out of there. What are you doing? And... Uh, Fortunately, that's another reason I love Chapter House. I mean, 
mean, this is a high accountability, very structured. It's extended care. You know, we call it sober living, but this is truly extended care. And it's about recovery and getting in there and learning how to live and build your life without drugs and alcohol and do it and being happy, you know. And in addition to the structured and high accountability that we have, we have fun. We go, we're in, you know, we take them to the UFC gym, they work out, they grapple with the guys with the MMA fighters, and they, we take them to feed the homeless. You know, we took them to Colorado for a conference up there, and, you know, we, they're active and they're having fun too, in addition to learning how to live and get their life back on track. Well, that so, sounds like so much fun. I'm thinking I might go drink again just so I can recover and, and have a lot of fun. So uh, I would recommend. So what about the guy? And, and this also could be for both y'all. What about the guy that, you know, um, has a drug problem, but, you know, he thinks he's he's never really had a problem with alcohol. So, you know, he's um, he's he's had a, he, he gets into trouble and he smokes pot because then he does cocaine. And so he has a big problem. And he gets busted for cocaine, but he's never really had an alcohol problem. What do you guys do with something like that? Uh, with, with just drugs only? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, there's, there's strict drug, just drug programs. I mean, uh, the, the chemical dependency and alcohol these days, most people are, are doing, and I, and I heard a great therapist yesterday talk about this, uh, at the Meadows, Sherry, she, you know, there's very few people that are just going to treatment for alcohol, alcohol. If you look at the statistics of people that are dying from alcohol related deaths, it's still astounding. But people typically are going into treatment where they've got a drug and alcohol problem. So if they only have a drug problem, chronic, let's say they're on an opiate issue, they've got an opiate problem with their, be related to uh, chronic pain. There are some great pain recovery programs out there that only treat the opiate addiction slash chronic pain. So you get a, a, you know, a functioning professional that, had an injury of some type and uh, or some kind, and they um, became addicted to opiates. Um, there's programs uh, that are designated specifically for them that aren't related to alcohol. So it's a great question, though. Very good question. Well, I, and I'll tell you, is for for my sake, because um, I was I did both. Uh, the problem that I found is that what what caused me to drink is the same thing that caused me to do drugs. And once I got down to the causes and conditions and start dealing with them and looking at them, you know, face to face, then it became a lot easier for me to, you know, like you said, you know, have fun and enjoy life uh, without having to do all that stuff. Uh, we are running out of time. And before we do, I want to make sure we, we give out the information for people to get a hold of you again. So uh, so once again, so Chapter House um and it's uh it is it's and i love that you said extended stay that is so critical because yeah these 30 day in and out 30 day programs generally are not very successful so if you want to get a hold of gary and chapter house the admissions number is 1-888-448-9696 888-448-9696 and then foundations uh you just can they ask for you maggie or is this or is this the admissions number direct number oh it's your, your direct number there you go folks okay call maggie um you, you she's cute as a button too so 817-239-9308 it's 817-239-9308 you guys i appreciate you um calling in uh, today and being with us on the show uh, we are running out of time. So thank you all for listening to the Mosquito Steve show. If you have any questions, Steve at MosquitoSteve.com. Be sure and check out my website for everything that's going on. Got a big sale this week. Buy one, get one free on spray-on repellents. So uh, check out the website. Have a great week.